Well, let me let me start, Ira. I want to introduce everybody here. Uh, everybody here, with the exception of Eso, uh, has a a part of history involving uh, a man that we all love, uh, that we all admire, um, and that man. Hold on, we got one more guest coming in. Whoa! Oh. Hold on, hold it's on. Three. It's Jay from Heaven. <laughs> Madison. <laughs> oh, oh my God! Well, Madison, first of all, I think you're muted, number one, because we can't hear. I am. There we go. Now you're good. I was muted. Hi. Wait, where are you? I see you. Hi. 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 So I want to do a quick little intro. We're recording, so uh, I want to do an intro. We're not live, but I want to mention that, you know, everybody that's here right now, uh, with the exception of Iso, who you see on here. I am famous. I'm famous. <laughs> oh dear God! Who's really writing lines change. for you? Who's sending you lines right now? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's changed. Uh, I want to. I want to introduce uh, this crew here that has been a part of. Uh, we've all been blessed to be a part of Jay Thomas's life. Uh, the amazing actor, uh, the amazing uh, uh, radio man comic um he was he was uh, a jack of all trades he was something else man did it his way never apologized to anybody and was cool enough to let us all be a part of his thing and learn not only about the business but about life and uh and so welcome my guests from the jay thomas show throughout the years That voice that will be barreling through this entire show is none other than Ira, the weatherman, ladies and gentlemen. Thank Ira. you. Thank you. Go ahead. I know you're dying to plug it. Where can people hear you? Okay. First of all, I did weather for a radio station in um, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina. His name is Brooke on WM. XV V one of three point three. Christina, yeah, we'll throw you that. We'll throw that him. link. We'll throw that yes, link I in the did. episode. Yeah, you we'll, we'll plug him. To him. I you sure did. Him. I know. I was there. I like how Ira and has to justify these are real people. You spoke to him. <laughs> He's I real. Ira's, I called in for Ira's birthday show. I was the special guest. Uh, oh no. Well, Chris really making things Kalen. happen for me, guys. Chris <laughs> Kalen on WBTA Batavi in New York. On the Ira, uh, let's yeah. let's tease the third plug for the next segment. Uh, <laughs> let me introduce some other people. Uh, this gentleman, I mean, when I started working with Jay, he was he was running the board. He was doing all the jobs. Oh, Smokey, Smokey the Bear. <laughs> oh God! Uh, also Burn. known, uh, also known as Garrett, Garrett Burn. Anderson, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, he smokes up, like everyone? a chimney. Yeah, is that it? Yeah, Garrett quit smoking. Yeah. Oh, he did. Oh, that's good. So now you got to come up with a new nickname. His lungs. You got to come up with a new nickname for him on the spot. Go, okay. Ira. What Garrett is it? The greatest. Garrett the greatest. Uh, Garrett the greatest. Perfect. Yes. Wow, that's I a compliment it. coming yes. to Myra. That is right. Uh, <laughs> Garrett, uh, how how are you, buddy? Where did you go? Well, there you are. Doing Garrett, great. where are you? <laughs> how how have you been, my friend? You left the show to uh, follow your idol in radio at that my time. Muse. Your muse, yeah. uh, Anthony Cumia, to the Cumia I Network. I didn't, know you, I didn't know you worked for Casey Kasem. <laughs> I wish. And uh, yeah, I decided on uh, Christina's birthday that I wanted to leave mm-hmm. the show to her yeah. as a night birthday. Pre- left for work for Anthony Cumia. Still yeah, there. He, 
He dropped high a nice and dry. He left me very dropped, high and very dry. He dropped a nice pe- uh, honking pile of shit right on your lap there, Christina. <laughs> uh, you no, know, I never had children, but you guys are all like children to me. So oh, thanks. Mom. That's how it, I, I feel very <laughs> nurturing to all of you. So. Well, speaking of children, you can't talk about uh, the great Jay Thomas. Uh, one of the one of the craziest <laughs> stories I've ever heard. Um, Get him off the bike. Get him off the bike. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the My Yamaka is a COVID Mask podcast starring Shuli. This is J.T. Harding, illegitimate son of Jay Thomas. Do not adjust your computers. I'm really dressed like this. Live from Nashville. Stick around. At the end of the show, I'm giving a promo code for my new book about Jay, How to Cope When a Loved One Becomes a Rerun. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Chip Thank off the old it. block. Chip off the old block, my friend. How oh, you been, man. JT? Long man, time no am, see, pal. I am, I am fantastic. I'm down here in Nashville. I mean, there's more bachelorettes down here than you could shake a penis straw at. We're writing songs <laughs> over the Zoom, and I'm really glad to be here. And uh, I see Madison. Hey, last JT! Time. I'm going to cry. I didn't know you were going to be on this. Hello, so I'm- Ira. I'm in Nashville. It's hey, so JT! Cold. Listen, listen. I want you to do me a favor. Oh, boy. Tomorrow... <laughs> I'm going to be on WXLC 102.3 <laughs> in Chicago, Illinois. With, with the plugs. West and Leah in the morning, 735. They did. They taped me at 8 o'clock. I'm on the air. I, I will. You know, you know, I have underwater basket weaving class tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to skip it. But Madison, it's good to see you. Last time I heard wow. you were crying on the Howard Stern show. I, I yeah. was incredible. Oh, yeah. Now get ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's going to be crying on my show now. Go Wait, ahead, Madison. Can you guys hear me? Because I can't yes. hear me. Yes, yeah. we can hear you. We hear oh, you loud okay. and clear. Thank you, Shirley, awesome. for including me. Let's keep rocking. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to have all you guys here. The great Steve Gonzalez here, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. The Friday show, oh, Steve. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, keep it down, Ira. You're going to disturb Steve the other Harvey. people at the Charlie's Chinese Buffet. Yeah. <laughs> and Steve, of course, are you still working at that place? Steve, you still working at that place? Yeah, uh, like, yeah working at a place. <laughs> yes, he's still at a place, uh, Ira. You're still at, you're still at uh, Sirius, huh? Yes. Yeah. Yes. For the time being. I can get you a job <laughs> at, on a radio station in Chicago. With Sherelle in the morning or whoever the fuck he was talking about. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Oh, it's who's in shaking the you? Who's shaking oh. you, Ira, while you're talking? Uh, Nobody. I love that. So and then let me also introduce uh, one of my favorites, sweetheart. Madison. Uh, thank you. Madison, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, guys. In the house. Oh. It's so Why nice to be here. Madison? I'm all right. I miss I have a stuffed koala in the other room. Uh, we took a road trip and the dog expressed his anal glands on <laughs> on my husband and a little bit on the koala. The koala stuffed koala is named Jay. Oh, so there you go. Oh, well, in honor of it's Jay. It's very fitting to have anal yeah. glands all over. Again. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it was a bad smell of fish oh. and shit. And we didn't know what it was. We it thought was, it was so awful. great because Jay yeah. is worst. Worst vacation Ever was when I went to Australia. <laughs> so that's great. He said it was like Florida in the 70s. Oh, and stop. Hated, and he hated podcasts. So this is all just perfect. Oh, I love okay. it. My God, I had no idea that he <laughs> had a connection with koalas. And the day that I found out he passed away, I called Christina crying and I was at the San Diego Zoo and I bought the koala and named it Jay. So there you go. So it's all full, full circle, full kids. Full circle. Yeah. I see that uh, JT's holding up the Jay Thomas uh, action figure, the the doll. I see that uh, Christina has a painting. Does anybody else have any memorabilia, yeah. anything that they I'm gonna go you get don't the have koala. to go I'm ahead? Get the koala. Oh, go you're going to touch it. It's got anal juice all over it. Oh. I mean, Jay would have wanted it. <laughs> Jay would have wanted it that way. You know, I was sad because uh, my my action figure is in uh, it's in you know, another part of the house. But I'm sad because my 
um, the, the, the painting that I have that was done by a penis yeah. and an anus, as mm. Jay would call it, uh, is still stuck at the offices where we're banned to be because of COVID. But uh, that's a, a um, really great piece. But unfortunately, but still, this is a be a day and it's from Mike oh, Dennison. I and remember he, that. Yeah. And he was a, a guest on the Jay Thomas show. And uh, this hangs in my office. I look at it every single day. Wow. So, yeah. Garrett, 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 how about Garrett, the bird? Garrett is holding up a lovely. Bird. Hold uh, Garrett, on. Hi, Garrett, uh, Garrett is holding up a lovely broken piece of something. What is that? Yeah. Garrett? What do you have, Garrett? That <laughs> looks <laughs> like an, an award of some kind. This is our 2013 First place, Ryan Stiles Celebrity Golf Classic. Winners. Oh. They came back winners. That was a big deal. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it was you and Jay golfing together? Me and Jay, and we got hooked up with like two ringers that were pretty much like semi pros. Because I was going to say, the whole match. I was going to say, either both of you or one of you was stoned during that whole <laughs> tournament. So yeah. it's not like you guys did well. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> 15 years since I played golf and I was like drinking and smoking by the 15th <laughs> hole. I was like, I'm tired. I just, I can't even want to walk anymore. And she's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, I don't know, I've done this. You do this all the time. But we got through. And then I had like a putt, like a 50 foot putt to win a trip to Hawaii. And we missed that. And uh, the, the uh, other, our other partners got to go. Well, I have all you would have got it. Yeah. What do, have, Shuley? what do you have, Shuley? I don't have it here, but I have the I have one of the footballs that he threw uh, on Letterman signed by oh. him and by Letterman. And I don't have it anymore, but he gave me the meatball, too, which I held. <laughs> I held in my freezer for like three years. And then oh, finally, my, my wife's like something happened. I think our fridge broke and, and everything melted. And she's uh, like, we got to get rid of this. It smells. You should no, have eaten it on your minute. wedding day. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The very last show they did. I'd never seen one of the footballs, although I went to the show. I had it in my hands and I said, OK, this is the end. This will be great. We'll have Letterman sign it. And someone walked off with it. I've never seen the football since. Maybe you have it, mother. It might be the one. It might be the one. It was the first <laughs> time I ever yelled at my kids was over that football because they were playing with it one day and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, <laughs> you deserve it. You deserve yeah. it. You deserve it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Lay gentlemen, celebrity pop in Geronimo checking Woo! in in the back like creeping <laughs> death. I see you. Uh, something's up with Madison's hey, Geronimo. audience. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Booba. Um, oh, so, all right, all right. How about this? Yeah. Whoa. Nice. I'm his star Hollywood Walk of Fame. Uh, I guess they give you this when they, you know, his star is there. It's actually cracked. I've seen it, but they give you this as well. And I'm not going to take down one of my own gold albums to hang it up, but it's fun to be here. You know, <laughs> absolutely. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, you know, there's so many memories that I have of the show and of Jay. Uh, he really was. Get him off the mic. Get him off the mic. He really Get was an original. Get Stop rid it. of him. Surely quit telling him to talk. I know, right? <laughs> to be Jay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Um, Wait, Julie, can I? I just want to make sure you can hear me. I have yes, to, okay, we got okay, you. I'm done, You're back. I'm Edit it out. No problem. <laughs> Hi, Geronimo. We're, we're keeping it all in. So, um, he doesn't hear you. That's fine. He's like every I'm sorry, husband. Guys, I'm so He's sorry. tuned out a woman's voice. He doesn't I'm so hear. Sorry. Me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, I, there's so many things that that I think, of, but the the hanging with Jay off the air was always the most fun for me, because you know. The legendary stories that I don't think were ever talked about was Jay coming to the Stern Christmas parties. Oh, my and God. Every year sneaking somebody in and telling them it was a family member to the point where even when he wanted to bring family members, they didn't allow him to bring family members <laughs> after that. But I Can mean, I there was. Yeah, the, ve the very first Stern Christmas party that I got to attend, I was so excited that I was going to be in the presence of such greatness. Yeah. And he turns to Howard and goes, this is my niece, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you motherfucker, because, you know, I'm your producer. Like, it would have been yeah. nice to be introduced as your producer, but fine. But then Howard's like, Jesus, Jay, <laughs> get right in front of me. <laughs> 
<laughs> he was amazing. He was amazing. He, he I remember the first Christmas party they had at this club Tau, right? In the city. And I show up to the Christmas party. And I had done his show a couple times. I wasn't a regular on it. Uh, but we knew each other. And as usual, I had weed on me. And he spots me in this packed club, packed. And he goes, you got any smoke on you? And I'm like, <laughs> and I go, yeah. And I go, but there's nowhere to smoke. He goes, I got a place. Come with me. And we're walking, zigzagging. He goes down this one spot, sees it. there's a door on the right, opens the door. We go in. I'm following him. We're in this like hallway area. Nobody's in it. It's just us. And he's like, light it up. And I'm like, oh, we're cool here. He goes, yeah, yeah. I light up the bowl. We start smoking the bowl. He takes a hit. Next thing you know, I hear security. Hey, he goes, come on. We got to get the fuck out of here. And I'm like, <laughs> I said, I thought you had this spot like you smoked here before. He goes, no, I've never been in this place. He goes, are you kidding me? That's what I knew. I'm like, this guy is legit. Real deal. This guy, he is the man. And I used to listen to Jay when I was going to school in, in L.A., he was on Power 106. I remember hearing him on Power 106. So to be Me able too. to. Me yeah. too. I had no idea. Yeah. My father. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's one of the craziest stories for anybody that's tuning in that hadn't heard Jay or doesn't know any of this. JT, uh, I mean, you tell the story, JT. This is your story. I don't want to I don't want to fuck it up. Uh, I, I was uh, I was adopted at birth. Wouldn't trade my parents for anything in the world. I moved out to California. To are they in the room with you right there? Are they no, are no, they there? Not. Is that why you had to say that? All right, I'm go not. ahead. Sorry. I'm not one of these sad drug addict uh, celebrity kids. That's the Hulk Hogan podcast next week. OK, uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so I moved to Hollywood to pursue music and I met my biological mother after talking with her for about two months. She finally said, I want to tell you who your real father is. This is a 100% true story. I'm sure a lot of Shuley fans know this story. And I said, okay. And she said, this was all over the phone. She said, he's not like other people. And just speaking from the heart, <laughs> when someone says that, I thought maybe, just being honest, maybe he's in jail, maybe he's in a wheelchair. If someone says he's not like other people, you're, my brain was like the tree with the Keebler elves going in and out of it. You know, I was thinking everything. Was there a part of you thinking it was Superman or is that like he's, like he's from another planet? He's got superpowers? Maybe. I, I mean, when I was growing up, I, you know, my birth certificate is an apology from a condom company. So I knew something was wrong. <laughs> I saw girls, my dad was David Lee Roth and all that stuff. No, but I knew she was serious. And I said, okay. And she said, he's an actor. He's on Cheers. And as most of you know, I thought brown hair, brown eyes, Cheers. I'm rich. My biological father is Ted Danson. I yelled that to my roommates. And she said, no. Not Ted Danson, it's Jay Thomas. And I said, the DJ, 100% true, up the street from my apartment. I've got a picture of it in my phone. A seven-story billboard of Jay's head on a woman's body. And it said, Power 106, we apologize for Jay Thomas. And then I went down to the 7-Eleven, and he's on the cover of, you know, TV Guide. And it, I knew she was telling me the truth, but it was Pretty crazy. It's such a bad movie. I'm surprised Jay didn't make it, you know. And have <laughs> but uh, so that's the story, you know. And then, and then you guys yes. and then you guys reunited years later and you're you're literally a chip off the old block. So there's no way you guys wouldn't hit it off. You remind me of him yeah. so much. And uh, wild. Yeah. And it must have been awesome to have the best of both worlds, your, your folks and your other folks and 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 performing with your dad and, and like doing your own thing. Uh, you're a great musician, songwriter, very successful. This guy, you know, he's not Tony Rock. OK, yeah. this is <laughs> this is a real deal. No, sh Man. no offense. How about, when, how about that musical I wrote sold out every night? And I yeah. don't know why, Garrett, you were in the front row and you had your hands over your he face. He was eating like, his collar like you couldn't handle seeing Jay act in front of you or something. It was classic. It was the best. So set this that up. So an you, Arab man. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. You you put together a, mu a musical and Garrett and Jay started it. Correct. And then Garrett came to see a performance and yeah. you Garrett was literally embarrassed for Jay. I think so because I didn't know this, but in musicals, by the way, it should have been a comedy. It wasn't. I didn't 
realize in musicals, everyone played the, like different parts because you don't have any money. So yeah, Jay is in the show playing like this really mean Southern father. And then he came out with like a hood on playing a terrorist in Afghanistan because he goes to war. And so all of a sudden you have Eddie Lebeck saying, Kumanaka And I look in the front row and there's Garrett with like covering his face. But it didn't look like Garrett was enjoying himself. And then of course, it? and then you can hear a pin drop and all of a sudden from the back you hear this I know that's Jay <laughs> <laughs> this is my ticket stub from, from that night oh my wow. god yeah. <laughs> And oh my God. Uh, I can attest Garrett was eating his collar. He was so uncomfortable. And he's the whole time. He's like, I can't, I can't, I can't. And I, I'm like elbowing him. I'm like, shut up. We were in the fridge where we were literally the only row that you could see in yes. a dark theater. And here he is. <laughs> With outside of his own body. It was Chris, hysterical. Yes. Christina, I'm in the back of the theater and the lights are shining on the front row and I'm like, the whole audience can see Garrett covering his face. <laughs> anyway, it was fantastic. I, I, don't, I don't know why that is. I don't even know why I'm talking about that. I'm probably high off this shuli mask I made. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I remember. And, and um, another favorite thing of mine was the Friday shows. The Friday shows were great because oh. It was it was a way oh, for we had Brent. Oh, I forgot you were here. We had, <laughs> yeah, Brent. We had Brent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. All right. I'll Iron wake Sheik you up in a minute came on one of those shows. <laughs> yeah, What's that's that? Iron Sheik came on. One well, of those that's what I was going to say. It, and it, it had, show. Yeah, it had like it, it had this ability to cross over on both ways. Like like we were able to introduce Jay to maybe Stern fans that never heard his show. But also we were able to have guests from the Stern show introduce themselves <laughs> to Jay and like the Riley crossover oh, uh, every Friday afternoon Amazing. when Riley's show would that. come on after Jay's was for <laughs> it was like for me, it was like watching art being you know just made right before your eyes just a masterpiece they had such a patience to deal with riley I and mean, he goofed on him but i, remember well, I mean but that. that was the beauty of jay right it was like he took these people so seriously the 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 woman christina who had the pickle farm who marinated pickles and kool-aid different mm-hmm. flavored pick and it's like anybody else you hear that and you go why would i want to talk to this person <laughs> <laughs> what what can I possibly talk to this person about? And Jay would sit there and he'd be hanging on every word yeah. and he'd have a follow up question, which for me was great because I just got to be the asshole. I was the bad cop. So it was awesome. Yeah. He gave them so much rope and it was like really so amazing to watch him perform, basically, yeah. because he literally could take anything, just four words out of a newspaper article and turn it into the most amazing story taken from the past, like a a real story. I mean, he was just such a great storyteller. But when he would have these crazy guests on, he never made fun of them. That was not never, never. Who remembers who remembers the topic that generated the most phone calls, I think, ever on the show? It was such a it was Jay. Jay pulled this out of his ass and it ended up being (laughs) the most called in topic ever. Anybody remember the phantom pooper? Remember the phantom pooper? (laughs) No, we we were coming back. Pooper. I we was com- in the I was in the ha ha seat for that one. Garrett remembers the Phantom Pooper. <laughs> we that were coming back from uh, yeah, we were coming back from break, and Garrett was playing another one bites the dust, and and it's just that bass line, and he just goes, "What do we need a bass guitar for?" Oh right, <laughs> he goes it's so it's so overrated. Uh-huh. He goes, the, "Find me, name me a song that if you take the bass out, it's still a great song. You don't oh, need it." Wow. It's, and I mean, just every line for three hours, like, <laughs> "What about this song? What about fucking?" It? Everybody's just up in arms, you know. <laughs> and and he's looking at me in the break, and he's going, "Well, I can't believe that shit, huh? Can you believe that?" <laughs> Like, who knows? We got to bring this up again next time. We need calls. He always <laughs> shocked himself, right? Like, he just couldn't believe that it was happening every single time, which made it so much fun. Like, it he never was, so, was just a regular thing. It was a different thing every single day. He was so confident in doing his show his way. He wasn't going to let anything 
take him off track. He didn't worry about phones, who's on hold. Like that to me was like every show I was doing on 101 was like, how the phone's looking, how the calls, what do we got, who's got what? <laughs> and now for to work with a guy, the phone lines are filled up, they're empty. He doesn't give a shit. He doesn't even look either way. He doesn't care. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I little, think he, a little behind the scenes, if you don't know, but you probably do. He, of course, loved his everyday show, but I was in Santa Barbara so much, especially near the end. He would prepare oh. for the Friday show because he knew so many of you know the Shuley fans and the Stern fans were listening. It's true. And he would that's why he was never late. He would jump out. I stopped going. I couldn't get up that early, you know. But he would prepare well, for that. He was never nervous for his regular show. He's probably in, in heaven right now saying, idiot, don't tell him. But uh, <laughs> he was so excited for the Friday shows because he, I think he had a lot more ears on him, you know? Remember yeah. whenever he would come into the studio, because a lot of people don't realize that we were never really in the same room together. That I mean, maybe a couple of times a year, but like yeah, we yeah. sounded like we were just like in each other's lives just 24-7. But he would show up to the studio with stacks mm -hmm. and stacks of newspapers and yes. magazines and cutouts. And he would, during the show, rip and throw it at me. Rip and <laughs> get this person. Rip, throw it at me. This person. This And like by the end of it, I, I mean, and you know, this is like the age of the cell phone. Like nobody was using paper except for <laughs> People Jay were Tom. emailing. People <laughs> were emailing people what they needed, you know, links. And he's just literally ripping pages yeah. into shapes of maps and he's like chris data find this person yep. for me and, and, no and, and information like there, there wasn't even a name in the article it was just like a one-off oh, opinion yeah. page or something i had yeah. to do so much research to find these psychopaths but my favorite was and garrett this was after you left was the right click left click when jay would have yeah a technical difficulty, the whole world would shut down. And it was the funniest thing in the world. And this one particular time, he had a post-it note that was given to him 12 years prior <laughs> we started Sirius XM, before it was XM. And it had whatever connection details that he needed to, for it. And, and something happened where this post-it fell in the garbage can and he couldn't find it. And he couldn't, I mean, he's screaming at me on the, we did the whole thing on the air. He's got IT on the, on the phone with us and he's going, just tell me if I have to do a right click or a left click. <laughs> and then I would start laughing. He goes, you know, you're an asshole. You're an asshole. <laughs> Idiot. And like flip out. And it was, I mean, to this day, just the funniest thing when I think about it, because I have so many technical problems myself and I swear it's him like, being like ha -ha. <laughs> it's funny you brought up him doing stuff live on the air. You know, the, 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 the day that I realized this dude was a fucking pros pro was Garrett, uh, his ISDN dropped out like three minutes before the show. This is when we were in that little yeah. booth. Right. And he uh -huh. got and you go, uh, you want me to get a best of? I have one ready. And he goes, nah, just call me on my phone. He goes, I'll do it. He goes, I'll do it over my phone. And Garrett, and without hesitation, Garrett's like, okay. And Garrett calls him on his phone. And now Jay is doing his three hour show on his phone. And while, while he's interviewing people, he's dropping off his dry cleaning. He's, doing errands. he's running errands. He he picked. Didn't he pick up a hitchhiker or somebody whose car broke or like their tire was flat? Yeah, and he picked, yeah. And he picked them up and he's interviewing them while he's interviewing somebody else on the phone. And I'm like, this guy took just a pile of shit and made it into amazing radio amazing he, he stopped at a fire department and interviewed the firemen and stuff yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. he interviewed my father do you garrett probably <laughs> remembers this because my father yeah. found out he had a little skin cancer on his penis so jay was like get him on the show <laughs> and he jay got jay made it hilarious at rim shots and everything, yeah. you know? And then uh, when, when Elliot Spitzer, um, that whole scandal, I think he right. had my father back on because, <laughs> you know, we're from Albany and the capital is in Albany. So, you know, he was digging, he, he was desperate because I think our my parents cleaning lady also worked at the governor's mansion. Jay was like, get the cleaning lady. <laughs> he, Find out he, what's going on. He got my dad to stop listening. My dad refused to listen because <laughs> Jay pissed him off because uh, he it was what he was saying. Don't die for my freedoms. 
right? Oh, about God, uh, about, right. about the, the military. And my father was like, listen, you can be against the war, but you must support the soldiers. Always support. I cannot listen to him. He makes me nuts. He said. And he listened to Rush Limbaugh every day. So I'm like, I don't know how you can't listen to Jay. But uh, but Jay loved my parents. Jay always told me he's like, do more stuff with them. Do more stuff with them. They're gold. He used to always tell me. <laughs> and then Ira, Ira. Let's talk a little That's bit about right. Ira. Ira well, okay. surely yeah. the first time I called up V100 in West Virginia, Steve got on the phone, Steve Bishop and Jenny got on the phone and Steve right. said to me, you're Ira the weatherman. Yeah, Ira, uh, we're I, doing a tribute to Jay, not Steve <laughs> and, uh, and Heidi. I think he's trying to say that he Steve knew Bishop is a fan of Ira. Yeah. yeah, I get it. All right. We'll do the tribute to Steve and Edie Gourmet <laughs> after the Jay Thomas one. But Ira, what year did you first speak to Jay uh, over the phone? Because he was on terrestrial radio. What station? He was on terrestrial radio, jamming 105.1 FM. He had the jamming radio. What year was this? he was on uh, the music. The internet in 2000, 1999 to 2000. Okay, and so you call in, and and uh, he... I called in. I said, "Jay, there's gonna be a snowstorm the end of March, the first week in April." And what did it do? It snowed. You gave yourself that two week cushion <laughs> of possibly <laughs> a snowstorm. Like a, that sounds like a rap song. I gotta write. What the <laughs> dude? <laughs> and he liked me so ever since. Now, Jay, I mean, when you say liked you, Jay loved you. Jay uh, he loved me. Yeah. And Jay, other people love me, too, in, in the business. Yeah. If you plug Steve one more time, I'm going <laughs> to hang up on you. No, I'm going to plug somebody else. No, hold on. Don't plug yet. What I want to say is Jay looked out for you for many, many years. And any time he could include you or invite you to something, he would. And that that had to feel pretty good. Right, Ira? I, that uh, that was very very good. Yeah, and and he let you do radio, your favorite thing of all time. Let me do radio. That's right. That's how I got on the radio stations now. Yeah, now you're a big shot. You're over in Iowa, <laughs> West Virginia, all the huge markets. That, that's you're killing right. it. Right. Good for you. And I'm good doing very very good. Well, in yeah, honor of Jay. Ragged. Yeah, in honor of Jay. What's the weather going to be like? Well, in Alabama, it's around 62 degrees. With a chance of anti-Semitism. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And in New York, it's going to go around uh, 25 degrees and tomorrow a little bit of chance of rain with a high around 41 degrees. It's going to be beautiful for the rest of the week. There's a warming trend coming up the coast. Wow. You know my favorite thing? Ira, this is JT. Have you ever walked into the store and, and forgot your mask and you use your yarmulke as a mask? No, I don't. I use a regular mask. Okay. For, as a yarmulke? Yeah. Well, that's weird. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> listen, uh, one of my favorite things when it came to Ira is when on the Friday show, Steve, when one of us would have to leave early, uh, either Jay had a shoot or something, or I had a show I had to fly out to, we would create a fake fight. And one of whoever had to leave early would storm off the show. That's and, right. Yeah. And my favorite part about it was always seeing, even though we would talk about it in the break and we'd set it all up and Ira's there the whole time in the break, when it would start, Ira would be confused every time. <laughs> <laughs> he'd always, he'd always yeah. have that look on his face. Like mom and dad are fighting for real. <laughs> what about the times yeah. that we would record drops of you, Shuli, and you would leave and Jay yeah. wouldn't even be gone. Oh, Oh my God. I I went I went one day and recorded 20 tracks of me talking, answering yep. questions. One of them one of them was yeah, one of, one of them was just the me starting a story but not finishing it. I go, you know what? That reminds me of the time and you know what? I'll tell it later. Go ahead, Jen. That was the drop. That's great. 
And I gave it to Garrett. I'm like, just play these. I'm leaving early today. And because, you know, I was getting in trouble for leaving early so much. But we had this tour. And, you know, it's funny. I look back on those Fridays now and I'm like, fuck what I wouldn't give to sit in that chair with that guy for as many Fridays as possible now. But yeah, Garrett just starts hitting the fucking drops while I'm gone. <laughs> Jay, the funny thing was, he didn't we know. Pull- he didn't know. He never knew. That was the thing. Like we were, we were playing it like ten to fifteen times, and we thought it was obvious. And then, like on the sixteenth time, he goes, "Wait." Is that a recording? And we were like, <laughs> How did you not know? It was like well, so obvious. Steve used to do the time. same thing. You see the fall for that every time. Steve, you used to do the same thing with Ira drops, correct? We, I would do it with a lot of things. One that stood out is um, when he was doing uh, the show in New Orleans in his brother's house. Yeah. And his neighbor started mowing the lawn. <laughs> he was getting angry. He closed the window. He's like, I told this guy I was going to be on the air. And then he starts yelling out the window. And like the smart ass I am, I pull up a lawnmower sound effect and I start like the guy's done. This was at the beginning of the show. I just keep sure. ringing it up every like <laughs> 10 minutes. Like he's rounding the house. And you like that son of a bitch. You hear him like slam the window, open it, close the window, out the window. And then I got a little overzealous and uh, Jay's like, you son of a bitch. You're playing a sound, aren't you? <laughs> so, I remember. So I funny. remember. Yeah, I remember with the clips of, of right. on Fridays or what any other of Ira of any of us. And he would always. Yeah, it would take him a while. Oh, we would get Ira yelled at by Jay and Ira wasn't saying a word. <laughs> he was just sitting there dozed off, taking a nap. And Steve would just That's hit, right. <laughs> Steve would just hit a drop of Ira going. Jay, he wouldn't even yell it. He was just going, Jay, and, and Jay would be in the middle of this whole ride. He'd go, not fucking now, Ira. I got to tell uh, my Jay's sons, Jake and Sam, about the lawnmower thing. That is classic. Yeah, that was so funny. <laughs> Well, how about the time we got you stoned, Ira? You remember that in the hotel room? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Jay Jay wanted to get high with me and Ira, and we did. I was there. Yeah. Ten minutes into getting high, Jay regretted it so much. He goes, (laughs) he's looking at Ira shuffling around. He goes, we made made a horrible mistake. (laughs) Who was with me when we got, when we were smoking on the street and he like <laughs> came up with this whole cop movie and we were dodging people. And d- does anybody remember that? I was there with you. When okay, he, yeah. yeah. He came up with an entire Law and Order episode yeah. while we were zigzagging and dodging random people while smoking pot <laughs> through the streets of Manhattan. Well, as far as the most compelling episode I've ever never seen. As <laughs> far as as far as Jay and stoned ideas, let's not forget <laughs> the game show. The game we- show! We came up with high as a kite in his hotel room where all it was was a toss of a coin. You flipped the coin. <laughs> this, is, this is how stoned we were. You flip brilliant. the coin and then you catch it and you and you go the guy heads or tails. <laughs> they, <laughs> and they can pick heads or tails or this is Jay's idea because Jay was a money guy. He goes, or they give us 50 bucks right there on the spot. <laughs> I go, this is the only game show where contestants got to bring a bankroll with them. He's like, they give us 50 bucks, uh, 50 bucks and they can have what's behind door one. Uh, Wasn't it or- pay to play? Wasn't it called pay to play? <laughs> yeah. He goes, we, it costs us nothing. They have to bring their own money. That was his whole idea. To come out with a bunch of suitcases and just keep opening up the suitcase to a smaller suitcase. There was nothing in the suitcase. Oh, it was really good weed. It was really good weed. Oh my um, god! So I can't, uh, we can't not talk about Kevin Meany though. Well, I was gonna say oh, yeah. uh, there, there's others that are not here. Uh, Rodney for, Lee Conover oh, for yeah. various reasons. Some are no longer with us. Some are too bitter to be with us. Some are, uh, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, Kevin. Wait, does Meany, that mean Rodney Lee Conover is? I don't know. I'm just a little bitter. Dead. Is he dead? I'm, thr- I'm he assuming. Dead? I'm assuming not everybody's thrilled. You know what I mean? It's just law of averages. But you I know call I call him. I have his number in my phone. Wait, Kevin, Kevin Meany didn't pass away, did he? Oh, yes. Meany? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Meany passed Kevin away. Kevin Meany passed away before Jay did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. 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 There he is, though. What's Apparently. Up, 
apparently that booth five was cursed from what I heard. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. But uh, one of my favorite Kevin shows, 100 percent. I don't know if you guys were all that were any of you were there for it was when he was prepping for his colonoscopy and decided to do it on the air and had to yeah. run out of the studio because he was going to shoot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How about when he took a colonopin on the air? Remember oh, that? Day? Oh, no, Ativan. It was an Ativan and he fucking he was talking to God for half the show. It was amazing. <laughs> it was the nicest Jay I've ever worked for. It was not that he was an asshole, but like <laughs> you could have come up, you could have pitched anything and he would have been like, absolutely. He was so. Like oh, sorry. I like that you said he's not that he wasn't an asshole. Like he would come in screaming and yelling about everything, and like at the house, we would you know would just would be too much. Finally, and someone would be like, "What is your problem? You know, like just relax for five seconds. We're eating breakfast, and you're you're yelling." And the house would be quiet, and Jay would say, "You're in a bad mood." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'd say you're yelling at everybody because you're mad about your job. And he said, you're jealous of Stern, I would say, which I didn't talk ooh, back to much. And he would say, right. I'm not mad. I have an unusual way of knowing excitement. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go ahead, Shuli. Sorry. Fully contained. <laughs> I mean, I, I, there's so many things that come to mind with Jay. Uh, stories. I love the stories. He, he was one of the greatest storytellers I've ever met in my life. There, there, uh, the, the story that, I mean, there's two stories that he told me that are neck and neck for the greatest stories I've ever heard. Um, <laughs> one of them has to do with, uh, this guy, David Gilmore, who I'm sure you're familiar with. <laughs> Garrett, has, He's Garrett already knows laughing. Cause he knows what this is. <laughs> I'm back in New York. I'm, I'm, I'm in my apartment. I'm stoned. He calls me up. He goes, you're not going to believe this. He goes, so we're going to have this guy, David Gilmore on tomorrow. <laughs> on the show. And he goes, and I get a call from uh, Scott Greenstein over at Sirius. And he says, uh, Greenstein wants to talk to me about having Gilmore on tomorrow. And Greenstein's going, listen, be real cool with this guy tomorrow. OK, this guy's a big, big dude. We're thinking of giving him his own channel here. <laughs> yes. Be don't be, you know, be good. Be a good boy tomorrow with this. And Jay's going <laughs> and he's looking at the guest sheet for the next day as Scott's telling him this. And it says under David Gilmore, who Scott is talking about the guitarist for Pink Floyd. Yes. <laughs> but but on Jay's sheet of who the guest is, it says David Gilmore took his son out of school for a year and let him watch TV. <laughs> And Jay's go and Jay's going and I'm looking at this. And I'm going, They're giving this guy a fucking channel. Goes, His own. What's he going to talk about on the channel? It's like they'll give anybody anything in this fucking place. Yeah. And of course, Jay doesn't know who the guitarist of Pink Floyd is. No, he has no idea. Like, why does so, Scott want to give this guy a channel? Because he took his kid out of school. It's he so has weird. no idea. It's like two ships just passing each other in a conversation of, you know. And I was I had tears running down my face yes. laughing. And from that fucking story, it was so hilarious. Only Jay. Probably the only time the head of Sirius ever called Jay. Ever, <laughs> ever. Yeah. What's the other story? His Robin Williams story, his his oh. Robin, his Robin oh, Williams yeah. story might be. I've heard so many comedy club stories. And this one, I've told it to yeah. like. I told I know I told it to Sebastian Maniscalco in the lobby of Sirius because I knew he I know he loves stories and I knew what a great story it was. So I stop him. I go, I got a quick story for you. <laughs> no lie. Two days later. His sister texts me, Sebastian's sister, and she's like, he just told us the Jay story. It was amazing. <laughs> so like, but it's Robin Williams is at the club. Uh, he's on stage. Jay's sitting towards the back. He's waiting to go on later. And Robin's destroying the room and he and they don't get along. They don't talk. Uh, and uh, and at one point, Robin just looks in the back and he's just like, who's that, Jay? He's like, Jay, is that you? And Jay's like, what the fuck? 
And Robin's like, listen, because Jay is one of the funniest guys I've ever met. He's he's hilarious. Uh, you guys want to see uh, Jay? Ira, are you getting a call? <laughs> huh? <laughs> That's a landline. Oh, I got another line. Wait, Hi, do you need to take that? <laughs> oh, come on. I didn't know, I didn't know Rick Dees was, had a show on Sunday night. By the way, this is the ghost of Jay. He's like, I'm tired of you telling this story. I'm going to call Ira in the middle of it. Oh, this is going to be great. You got to edit this. It's dumb. Dumb. Yeah. <laughs> Who is it, Ira? No, Anybody good? No, telephones. No, Fine. somebody, somebody wanted to say hello to me. Oh, yeah. Is it Seth and Heidi, I, wherever the fuck their name is? No, no, somebody <laughs> from another building. So, so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, Robin Williams is like, Jay, you feel like uh, doing a, a few minutes? You guys want to see Jay perform? And the crowd's going nuts. And Jay's in his head's going, this is fucking awesome. And he stands up. And, and before he could step towards the stage, on the back of his shoulder is a hand. And it's Jay Leno who was behind him the entire time. <laughs> and that's who Robin Williams was talking to <laughs> the entire time. Oh. And the best part of the story, what Jay told me is he goes, I went from having the greatest moment of my life <laughs> to, le to, to leading a standing ovation for Jay fucking Leno. <laughs> he's the only idiot standing up other than Jay walking <laughs> to the stage. Well, do you know, do you know when, um, do you know, uh, I wasn't there, but uh, some, you know, one of the great restaurants there, you know, Raul's or somewhere in uh, New York City. And there was just a buzz, just like like lightning. The air changed in the restaurant and everyone looked up and Meryl Streep had walked in the restaurant. And everyone was like, that's Meryl Streep, that's Meryl Streep. And sh she locked eyes with Jay, who's at the back of the restaurant. And she tilts her head and smiles. She's walking towards him. Everyone's like hitting Jay's leg under the table. And Jay, you know, Jay like celebrities. You know, he's like, oh my God, oh my God, incredible. And he stands up, he goes, hello, hello. And she shakes his hand and she goes, you work at the farmer's market by my house. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like a fucking balloon. The air went out and someone goes, no. Meryl, this is Jay Thomas. And she goes, I hope you can see my face out there. She goes, uh, uh, uh. I've never heard of him before. You work at the farmer's market. Oh. Classic, classic. Oh. Not as good as Robin Williams, but pretty good. I just love that. You're the slow child who rides the bike in the neighborhood. No. <laughs> no, I'm an actor and DJ, actually. That's what um, was so weird about him was, he wanted to be in Hollywood, but he hated it. But he hated Hollywood. He hated yeah. the people in it. He didn't want yeah. to be liked by them, but he wanted to be part of their club for some yeah. reason. I've yeah. always, I've also never met someone that's that's recognized so many times as the wrong person <laughs> in my life. I'll sign an autograph for it from the guy from Teen Wolf. Sure, why not? Sure, uh -huh. who? love who you, Teen he, Wolf. Who is he compared to? The uh, oh, well, coach from Teen Wolf. The what coach from Teen Wolf, name? the guy from Laverne and Shirley. Carla's uh, other Ragu. husband. Carla's other. And then he almost got into a fight with a guy who thought he was Tony Danza or some shit. Remember that, Garrett? <laughs> it was at like a bar or something. I kept calling him Danza, Tony Danza. <laughs> Jay, oh man, listen, the gloves are coming off. Jay was in a bar in New Orleans. A guy comes up. Hey man, hey man, can I talk to you? My wife is crazy about you. My wife is crazy about you. Well, sure, sure. The wife comes up, is all over and flirt with him. They try to get him to come up to the hotel room and they think, I, I don't, it's the fuck, it, 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 they didn't know it was Jay. They thought it was the big football coach. What's his name? Oh. Um, um, oh, I ruined the story. Um, who's a big football coach that looks like Jay? Nick Torza or something. Oh, Nick Saban? Oh, oh, oh. Nick Saban, Saban. Nick Saban. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> If one of my idiot, if my idiot brother didn't say what TV show do you like, and they were all confused, I could have had a threesome. If I was the same. <laughs> and also, Ooh, you're uh, going to get the merits for not knowing that in Alabama. Yeah, well, you know, listen, <laughs> I, the people ask me all the time because the two big teams is either Alabama's Roll Tide or Auburn War Eagles, and I uh -huh. always tell them. Uh, my team is the Jews because not a lot of players <laughs> on that yeah. fucking team out here. Yeah, Shirley's in Alabama now. I'm in Nashville. Yeah. You know they think you're smoking the bandit is a documentary down here. You just have to go. Over <laughs> are you are you living in Nashville? Because I'm going to be at Zanies at some point. I'm going to be coming oh, and playing you Zanies. Must. Yeah, you must. You must. I, 
It's in the works, man. I'll get you I a mean, date. You must, must call me. Oh, I'll be there t- totally. Yeah, totally. for sure. For sure. Let me um, ask you this, Shirley. <laughs> Are you going to be doing anything in New York City? Uh, eventually, yeah, absolutely. I'll be coming back there and doing some shows for sure. Empire You're gonna... <laughs> How about um, doing a show from one of the restaurants? <laughs> the Seven Seas? Are they oh, still open? Well, they really did a show no. in my baby Illinois. New Jersey. Yeah. Are they is the Seven Seas still open, Ira? No more, no more. Yeah. There's a Chinese restaurant over there. Ooh, gone. All right. Well yeah. see, if, see if they'll uh, pay you for plugs. No, <laughs> they wouldn't. They wouldn't. Wow. Hey, really, maybe you for, could work the Chinese restaurant. <laughs> hey, just for me, real maybe. quick, where, where is everybody? Steve, Madison, Garrett, where where are all? <laughs> well, I'm in Pennsylvania. Stevie, this is like the dyslexic Brady Bunch. <laughs> I, uh, Madison and I are in New Jersey. I'm like probably 30 minutes from her, actually. OK, and Gary, you're in Brooklyn, right? Yeah. And Ira, Co-op City. I'm in Co-op City. <laughs> the weatherman. Are you doing are you doing any gambling, Ira, since the uh, pandemic? I do gambling in Empire City. Also, I got a hotel room coming to me in the resorts international. So nothing's Whoa. stopping you, pal, and huh? Let me tell everybody this, Christina. I bet you're gonna like this. I got my second coronavirus vaccine yes. last yes. Tuesday. Wow. I was gonna and live I forever. Got, I got it at 169th Street at Broadway, the Armory. Well, and I told him you. Very, I told him you were an essential worker for comedy and happiness, and so I'm glad they moved right. you up the list. Yeah. That's right. What's and your favorite, Ira? Everything. Ira, what's your favorite uh, J memory? Do you have a favorite J memory? Get him off the mic. <laughs> get him off the mic. Get, get rid get of him, rid Ira. Of him. Get, get rid of him. him. No, but you know what? Get he rid was, of him. He's talking. I think he's talking about when Jay would oh. say, get him off. When Jay would get say it to Ira. Ira off. And yes. Send, them to get coffee and that's send him into the other room, Christina. Coffee. Send him into the other room. Yep. Bring him. Bring him out in the hall, Christina. I would always have to get <laughs> like an abused child. His favorite memory is being yelled at by his dad. <laughs> he used to send him to go get pretzels, but then he got in trouble for stealing all yeah. the pretzels. We couldn't leave him in the hall alone because he'd wander around talking to everybody and taking everything from everything. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> back and his bag would be filled with everything. I think he yes. stopped giving away pretzels in the kitchen because of Ira. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they locked that shit stopped. down, dude. They you did some damage. You want coffee? You want anything? Yeah. I'll bring you back coffee. <laughs> and then yeah, he'd Jay open. would send him in New York to go get Jay coffee. And then he would get lost. <laughs> he would get lost in front of uh, cousin Brucey's studio for about 15 minutes. That's right. <laughs> Just that at cousin Brucey is on a different radio station, which I want to say it's very, very good for him. I don't even listen to cousin Brucey. I listen to a radio station, Jersey 101.5 on the weekends. Bob O'Brien and your buddy, Eric Potts, who is on that radio station also. He's a comic. <laughs> Madison, says, good to yeah. see you. Uh, Hi. Talk to me about some of your J memories. Oh, thank you. Thank you for seeing my, my little chat. I, I know. I Betty. see it. A plethora. <laughs> and by the way, JT, I live in New Jersey, but I'm currently for the next couple of weeks in the same state as Shuli. I haven't revealed that on the air. I'm uh, down on the beach in a, in a beach house. Nice. Social oh. distancing in uh, Gulf Shores, Alabama. So I love yes, it. Lovely. Um, there are many. First of all, Shuli, I want to thank you for getting me on the Jay Thomas show because I was going through a bad... Madison, oh, let, me talk, with you. let me talk, Ira. Please, Ira. <laughs> So I had, I was going through a bad breakup. So I get on the Jay Thomas show and I, I, twice a week, I would laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh so hard, so hard. And I even laughed when Jay told me I wasn't a hot girl. I was okay. (laughs) You're not a hot girl, but you're okay. 
At least he and didn't he call to, you a Zoftic. Yeah, he had to Zofta. You don't well, like he it. did that oh, reverse. I'll tell you in a minute, but he did that reverse psychology. It's, well, no, it was yeah. fine. He. I he, feel like he got you married. He sure did. You're right? absolutely right. He, I yeah. mean, there were so number one. I gave him the Heimlich on the air. I don't know if anybody remembers that. A carrot <laughs> flew out of his mouth. Maybe a hot dog. That was one thing. I mean, there were so many great things. Uh, there was the uh, the naked cowboy. We had the naked cowboy on. Yeah. Um, Santa Barbara. He he. I went out to Santa Barbara with my then fiance, and he took he just took our rental car. We we came up from L.A. He just said, "Let me drive. Let me drive." Took the rental car. He's zipping around, zipping around. He's going like ninety miles an hour, and maybe a. 40 or 50 people are shaking their fingers at him <laughs> yelling at him and he's driving he's just driving then we go to the house the house was crazy there were nooks and crannies we're following him in this house this crazy house and then you know he took us out to dinner and it was amazing and lovely and just made us laugh i've never laughed so hard and i don't think uh, you know my husband's funny but i don't know if i have laughed as hard as i laughed with jay i, I haven't yeah. laughed that hard in a long long time yeah. He oh, yeah. saved me. He saved me. And surely you saved me because you got me on the show. And for three hours, I was just sitting this, and the people we interviewed, it was just dopey. You know, the yeah. phantom pooper. And, you know, there, there we interviewed a guy and I was just sit there and cackle. Basically, that's all I would do was. No, nah, he, he loved you. Laugh. He he loved you because you would take a stand on things and you were and but you were also open to having a discussion about it. And he liked where you were coming from with your opinions and your thoughts and your laugh was great too. Don't get me wrong. As, as a comic, he, he knows when there's gold in those Hills and that yeah. laugh definitely helped a lot of jokes. But so. he could turn, I mean, what he could do with, we had a guest on who ate a, a burnt, ate a Burger King burger every day for a year. That was his guest. <laughs> yeah. And but, what, I had to find these people, you know, but I remember, not yeah, but I, re I remember <laughs> it. It stuck with me. It stuck yeah. with me. That guy. Um, I still so think about the guy who did a replica of a stagecoach out of toothpicks <laughs> in his garage. And yeah. he, and he did it for a year and a half. And I'll never forget. <laughs> I asked him, I go, are you married? And he goes, yeah. And I go, what's your wife say when you're in the garage for a year and a half making this stagecoach? coach out of toothpicks and he goes she said it was crooked <laughs> now you can't write that and you don't book that guess you don't get that fucking line then it's like that's jay man that jay saw the jay saw the beauty and things that nobody would touch nobody jay got jay got jay came, so jay came out to the city when i got married and he did his week of shows from the city. He came to the wedding and, you know, he sees me at the front. He just takes a bunch of 20s. He's like, now here's your gift. Just throws out some 20s. But but people to this day will be like, oh, oh, I danced with Jay at your wedding. Oh, oh, Jay was, you know, he was the big star at the wedding. Oh, I danced with Jay. Jay, and he flirted with everyone. He was hugging everyone. Loved darling, it. A poor darling. Oh, poor yep. darling. That was a poor darling. But the best was my husband has a, a, a cousin and he, he was pretty sure that Jay broke up their marriage because of the wedding, because Jay flirted so hardcore with this woman at the wedding. Two months later, divorced. <laughs> she, they were flirting. They were nothing more than flirting. But, you know, we. How we old really, was she? Fire on him, buddy. Just oh. fire in her, in her, <laughs> just in fire her, on him. <laughs> she was in her 40s. Oh, okay. Very, very attractive. Very attractive. But oh, after wow. that, a few months later, kaput yeah. wow that that marriage was done He's and a powerful we always dude. blamed we always blamed jay always but people would <laughs> brag my sister i chance dance with jay at your wedding oh I, oh i met jay i had a friend from high school <gasps> jay thomas was at my friend's <laughs> wedding <laughs> jay jay and i actually let me and then then Wait. you can move on to ira i found this picture i don't know how do i do this i'll just me and jay Oh, oh, I love oh, that. Wow. It's just hey, nestling in my bosom. You remember the quickest interview he ever did was with that playmate chick? What was her name? Uh it, it was one of the one of the playmate oh, when Kendra, they had that Kendra, Kendra uh, Wilkinson. Oh yeah. my god. Because, he gets her on yeah. the phone and she and all you hear is uh come out of break, Gary Pods down the music. And I don't even think she said hello. He just goes 
We're on with Kendra Wilkinson, uh, has a reality show coming up. Kendra, you live in the mansion. I got to ask you, what's it like climbing yes. on to that disgusting old prick? Uh, Hugh Hefner and riding that fucking dick of his. That's got to be awful. What's that like? And you just hear <laughs> click. And I was like, <laughs> uh, a, a really high dollar adoption service dinner in, in Michigan where I'm from. They knew I had a couple of songs out. Could you come and play some songs? Somehow they said, do you think Jay would come and do this with you? And I said, oh boy. Not. But they said he can golf and all that. So he oh, flies yeah. there and we go to this country club and I believe they were, and I say this with all respect, they were adopting uh, children from Africa, bringing them to Michigan and they showed a video and uh, you know, the kids had, you know, flies on their faces and all that kind of stuff. Everyone gave these speeches about adopting, adopting. There's like, you know, a couple hundred people there. Jay gets on the mic. Finally, they introduce him to celebrity. Everyone's clapping, taking pictures. And I mean, we're talking teary eyed speeches people were giving. And Jay says, who here has given away a child? Because uh, <laughs> that's her heart. It's all grown ups. This literally, like this 27 year old, 400 pound woman at the table starts going, hoo, hoo. <laughs> <laughs> she raises her arm. She's giving away a child. And Jay says, Lady, I'm in room 302. If you want to start another family, <laughs> come by tonight. So people are giving me the X across the throat. And there was some like kid, some teenager doing the video screen. And he had Jay's like resume and picture up. But it was like, like for some reason, it was really dark. And Jay seemed to be eight by 10. It went, it went from like black and white. You know, it, was, it, was, it was the negative. And Jay says, Jesus, I look like a kid from one of those villages. Who's working this computer? Computer. They grabbed the mic from him. We got run out of that freaking country club. And they were chasing us. They were going to lynch him. That was only about eight months before he died. Oh, my, oh my God. Who oh here God. has given away a child? <laughs> what an open. He did what not. an open. Oh God. Oh, I, also, I also, I mean, if you talk about upsetting guests, uh, you got to talk about Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. Oh, oh, my yeah. God. Oh, I don't is... know this. Tell me this. I don't know. My this. knuckles were completely white by the end of that because I was just sitting there not able to breathe. <laughs> they just they had Kevin Bacon on. This was right after Madoff got taken right. down. And Kevin Bacon had lost money to Madoff. He invested in, in Bernie Madoff stuff. So they're like, whatever you do, don't bring up the Bernie Madoff. <laughs> and that's the worst thing you can tell Jay is this isn't for the air. <laughs> right, Steve, you're shaking your head. You're the, I can't. As soon as you say, don't say this, it's the first thing he, he goes to. First thing, first thing. What happened? Well, so Ke he's on, he that interview actually went a few minutes before he brought it up, you right? You can hear it on YouTube, also, everybody. Yeah. Yes, you have it uh, already. But man, when he brings it up, I mean, you talk about silence, right? Like you could hear air conditioning hum, like you could hear <laughs> fluorescent tubes what humming. Did he say? Way did too much out? dead like, air it? for live radio. Like the shock just like, of time was an, an eternity. If I remember it correctly, he didn't he try to like sneak it in almost like casually, like he was like, yeah, that Madoff thing, huh? He's like, yeah, lost. He's like, you lost a couple couple pennies in that, didn't you? Yeah, I almost thought he like asked them how much he lost. It was like, like a, a one off amount. Yeah. Yeah. And how then, much did you and lose a Madoff? And it was just nothing. Dead <laughs> silence. And then Kevin Bacon is like, oh, I, I really don't want to talk about that. And Jay goes. So I fucked this one up, didn't I? <laughs> I mean, I think no, I mean, you're uncomfortable. He's like, no, yeah. I, you're uncomfortable. I made you uncomfortable. Listen, I'm, and then he's doing his J like, listen, I'm just trying to get to the bottom. <laughs> he's just burying himself even more, even more. God, that, that one stands out. And also the Christina Wong interview really stands out for me because she was, you know, doing her thing. And, you know, Jay will not hold back. And he's like, all right, who fucked you up? 
Who was it? Who fucked you up? Because you're mad at somebody and you're taking it out on me. Who fucked you up? Was it an uncle or a father? What is the fun? And she's like, why don't you suck your own dick, Jay Thomas, and hang up on him? <laughs> and that was a soundbite for years to come. <laughs> she's in a bad mood. That's what he said. She's in a yeah. bad mood. Yeah. Who is that? Well, I don't even know who that is. She's a... She's a comic of some kind but yeah Kevin Bacon <laughs> should have said I lost more than any of your movies have ever made he should have yeah, he could have had a good comeback with that and by the way it's always the comics that are the most sensitive uh and speaking of which Eddie Izzard was another one. Oh my god that Eddie was Izzard as Eddie Izzard like cross dresses and all this stuff right. and and at one point in the interview, he talked about how his mom passed away at, a, at an early age. I'll never forget. She goes, did you ever try your dead mother's clothes on? Oh, no. He goes, is that, is that, is that how this whole thing started? Did you used to put on your dead mother's clothes? Oh, my God. That's <laughs> terrible. Yeah, you know, Jay, Jay you probably know this. Jay not stand comedians. Oh, yeah. They like, oh, I'm funny because I had a hard upbringing and all that. I mean, you've heard the Stephen, uh, Stephen, you've heard the Steve Martin interview with Jay from years ago, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's like, why are you so serious, man? What's your problem? You yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, he was big thing was like whenever we had a comic on and as soon as we'd go to break, he'd be like, I mean, you know, write a fucking bit. He'd go write some yeah. jokes. Yeah. Like, send me the fuck. I'll help you out. I'll fucking, you know, and, and it was. <laughs> He took it seriously. It was kind of old school like that, though. Like most comics nowadays or even 10 years ago, it was like you don't want to do your bits on the air. But Jay wanted you to do your bits on the air. Not only that, but it's like, all right, just look in the news and write two or three things yeah, about exactly. what's happening that day. If you don't want to do your bits, but like exactly just, before, everything's a hang. Right. So uh-huh. nobody's preparing. Look at that. Before the devil devil box came, the internet, I would do a whole Bill Cosby album at a comedy club and get laid. And then the internet came and people knew I was stealing it. It's nice to see somebody else working a puppet on Zoom for a change. I don't have to do it. George Lucas, his wife, left him for the window washer. Imagine how boring he is with all that science fiction shit. Idiot. So stupid. So stupid. I love when he badmouthed certain people. I love that because I'll never forget it. He told a story about, I'll never, ever forget it. And I can never like Mary Louise Parker because of what he said about her. (laughs) Garrett, do you remember this? No. I don't know. Share it with us. I felt felt bad about Mary Louise Parker because Billy Crudup was with her and then she was pregnant and then he left her and Jay's like, oh, that's because she's a fucking bitch, you know? And I was like, oh, no, it's terrible. He's like, oh, she's a bitch and she's mean to her sister. I know her sister, Sage. Sage is <laughs> nice. Mary, Mary, Mary Louise, oh, the fucking cunt. Oh, oh, like, One Halloween. Were- Oh, go. Sorry, man. go ahead. No, no, it's just that. And he, he spoke ill, he spoke ill of her and there were some other people. He he just knew he know he knew the um the inside mm-hmm. of these these people. Like if you know Rhea Perlman, he was like oh, you know bitch. Well, oh, shit. I mean, he used to he used to attack Howard, and he was on his channel doing it. Like it was exactly. it was yeah. the weird. He was amazing. He was yeah. amazing. Yeah. He was. But the Mary Louise Parker thing. I mean, I, after that, I was like, well, she's dead to me too. She's a bitch. <laughs> so she's dead to me. Oh, she's classic. nasty. And he told, I just love the way, uh, I love the way he said Mar- Mary Lou Henner. Marlou. I don't know. Marlou. I can't do it. Marlou Henner. The way he would say things was always so funny. The way, like, we Poor could never tell if he was saying the word pen or pin. It was yeah. always, it always sounded exactly the same. I think we did, like, three segments on it once. Like, just, <laughs> What's the uh, matter with you? I'm saying pen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And can I just tell one more thing? One more yeah, thing? Yeah, of course. It was after after my wedding, I was telling him, I was like, yeah, the, uh, I don't know if I should say this. There was a higher up at work who uh, came to my wedding and did not give a gift. Mm. And I told this to Jay. So, of course, Jay in the hallway, <laughs> right outside of the person's office. Oh, so you didn't give Madison a wedding <laughs> present. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> 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 fortified. 
That's why you can tell him shit, man. You yeah, can tell okay. him anything. anything. Yeah, he said oh, his but name. You can also trust him with your life. It was the weirdest yes. balance, yeah. like yeah. life balance of of all time. It's so strange. <laughs> Oh, classic. One Halloween, we got tickets to see the Rolling Stones. You know, idiots, Beatles, idiots, Dylan, loser, handles with vandals. And we're walking and everyone's dressed up and, and he sees Al Franken. And I'm always like starstruck over these people, you know? And uh, uh, that's the guy in Good Morning America, right? Yeah. No, no, no. no. Uh, what? It of? Oh, Al Roker. <laughs> Al Roker, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Al Frank. So we see Al a, Roker. And that's a Today Show, not Good Morning America. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Al, Al Roker was a. Uh, I was going to say Al Roker there. groped that woman's breasts in photos. Isn't yeah. that right? Oh, yeah. oh no, that was Al Franken. <laughs> We're walking past Al Roker, and uh, and he goes, "I'm so embarrassed. Everyone's dressed up. I'm I'm the only one not dressed up. It was Halloween night." And Jay said, "Well, go find a two by four and uh, put it up your ass, and goes goes a fudge stickle." <laughs> <laughs> nobody laughed and then jay i saw the head oh man i'm just to speak freely i don't know the person like i'll just say the president of a huge cable company and he was mm-hmm. like that prick could have had <laughs> any one of his shows but he says i'm not a star and this guy was alone with his like 12 year old daughter i'm sure they it was a divorce kind of thing he brings his daughter to the rolling stones and the guy goes oh jay thomas how you doing and then we go to the bathroom and jay's like that prick what a prick what a prick and of course they weren't dressed up they were just dressed really nice and we go walking past them to our seat and jay leans over and he goes hey good seeing you man and by the way i love your daughter's mask Ah. He wasn't wearing a costume. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, you know, Al Roker, love your daughter's oh. mouth. I was like, we got to get the out. Original of Savage. Oh, wow. Terrible. I tell you, listen. My, my, my last conversation Jeez. with him, you know, I never talked about it uh, because I really couldn't. But, you know, now that I'm, you know, doing my own thing, you know, the, you know, he told me, he's like, I, I need you to set aside you know, 60 to 90 minutes uninterrupted. I need you to have some paper, some pen. I need you to write this stuff down. And the very first thing he said to me was he said, you got to go. You got to leave this show. You got to do your own thing. And it was crazy. Everything he went down this list pretty much kind of went down like the way he said it, you know, and he had a mapped out in his head for all of us, mm-hmm. which to me was amazing. This was a week before he passed and he's still sitting here thinking about us. Like he's I'm sure thinking about you guys, you know, your his actual family. So he was amazing. And that's what I wanted to do here tonight with all you guys. Yes. Celebrate Thank that. Thank you. Shirley. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. You so much for Thank you. Shirley. Shirley. Shirley you're you going to go here. places. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to your place, you crazy fucker. And I'm bringing He's you like, back to well, Alabama. You're going to go places. He's already places. I have He's room places. here if you want to come. Yeah, I have room here. There's a synagogue nearby. How close is All the nearest right. casino? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a trap, but you can go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. People are so nice down here. They really are. I have no complaints. Why don't we have a 24-hour show? Because you'll fall asleep 45 minutes in. Yeah, you've been asleep oh, no, 12 I times. I haven't fallen asleep. Yeah, no, never. We don't, I don't have eight ha- hours of footage of you and my cell phone just <laughs> sleeping through entire shows. Hey, I don't have that at all. Hey, <laughs> oh my God. Uh, tomorrow morning, you can oh, catch me. It. <laughs> Get him away from morning. the mic, Garrett. Get him away, Garrett. Tomorrow morning, you can catch me on the Sky 106.5 <laughs> in Clarksburg, Virginia. I will be on doing weather for Spike and Colin. Also, <laughs> well, that's the name, Spike and Colin. I thought people were depressed because of quarantine, <laughs> because I was on every station. Uh, I was, he's the only one out of all of us that's really making it here. Yeah. Yes, you notice that? He's thrived during this pandemic like no one and else. So, Chris Kalen uh, with 
Do you have time to eat uh, during the day or are you just doing the brain busters? He's like on a press junket like The Rock (laughs) over here. He's like, well, I'm on the brain busters Monday through Friday. (laughs) uh, Brain busters. Seven o'clock. I'm on I'm on I'm on nut busters. uh, (laughs) (laughs) Ira, Ira, you found a tag team wrestling uh, team with a radio show. The brain busters. The brain Spiking buses. Colin. That's what it's on WBTA. You know the guy. You know the guy, Christina. Chris Kalen. Yes, yes, I know. yes. But enough about Chris. We've talked about him way too much on this episode. <laughs> it was really nice of you to get us together, Shuli, so that we could talk about Chris. Really, I would. I would do it again, and I think Spiking we should. Colin. I think we should. I think we should do this again at some point. Uh, maybe make this. I don't know, like a once a month thing. Get the crew together, shoot the Ooh, shit. Sure. You know, we sure. have some drinks, have so some tokes. Stories. We got tons of stories. Mm-hmm. Maybe we can dig up uh, some old audio. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. There were so gotta, many I'm stories I like wanted to tell, and I was like, ah, oh, there's just too many. You know? Yeah. Well, now we can tell. tell now one. we can tell them. Well, just tell them to tell them with your face covered chewing on the power. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you can I want to smoke my bowl, and I always remember Jay telling me if you're side, always take a hit and cross the street. Yep. Then they, no zigzag. one knows where it is. Zigzag. Yeah. And I yep. still learn, I tell people that, you know, all the time. And this is it's the perfect way. And now it really doesn't even matter because no Life one cares lessons. if you're smoking, but. It, yeah. didn't, it didn't stop the cops from trying to arrest Garrett and I, though, because yes. <laughs> we definitely we almost got busted once, but then we got out of it somehow. No, we did get busted out of it. We don't even know how they sent. Yeah, they were. Right? For, they sent us a, a notice that said that we had to come watch a video on drug use. And we were like, You're like, <laughs> we're like, we know how to use drugs. We don't need to watch a video. Thank you. Do you remember? Do you guys? Of course, you guys remember this. But I was actually I don't. Am I allowed to bring this up, JT? When you threw the shoe? Oh, yeah. For a minute, I thought, did I try to kiss Madison? I never tried to kiss Madison. No, maybe. Uh, well, two two quick things. Of course. Uh, you, of course you can bring it up. It's one a, one right. was you and Jay were going on the uh, Today Show with um, Hoda and Kathy Lee, and I went across the street with you guys, and I said, you guys need a, you need a bit. You need something. So I took off my bra, and I just gave it to you guys. What? Well, you well, you gave it to me. <laughs> I gave it to you, and I, I Kathy Lee was not amused. I don't you wore it out on top of your clothes. Yeah, right? she said I had I was like you know trying to get noticed for my music, and she said I like your shirt. It says "Party Like a Rockstar." I said, "Oh, you can have it," and I took my shirt off, and I had a bra under it. And like, <laughs> you can just imagine, you know, people spitting out their you know uh, frosted mini wheats all over yeah. the country. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. she then- was not. She wasn't that amused. And then the shoe. Shuley, well, you're right. Then you guys shoot? doubled down on that. You you go. What was that on Letterman? What what was yeah, that? Letterman. Jay and I went on every single show. And listen, so I took the bra. I had the bra. Jay was like, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe you did that. They're not going to like it." Before the wheels even hit the ground on the plane, they had already called me to come back the very next day. So Jay and I went on like Fox and Friends, all these shows, and I kept you know, kicking it up a notch. I came out in my boxer shorts, whatever. We're doing all these shows, having a great time. Other gossip TV shows at the time would, uh, like, like uh, there was like a Ghost Hunters thing. And they said, today on Ghost Hunters, they got terrified. And they showed these guys going in this like haunted mine shaft and open the door. And they had me running out from Fox and Friends in my underwear. So it was going great. Everywhere I was going, was getting recognized. We go on freaking Letterman and David Letterman says, How's your son? And we've already been on like 10 shows. And Jay goes, oh, no, don't ask me about that. So anyway, I was on Mark and Mindy. He just like breezed over it. And David, Le- and I'm thinking I could actually get famous here. He's tiny. Yeah. And Letterman said, well, how's your son? Also, Letterman had shown, he thought it was hysterical that George Bush had had a shoe thrown at him. He showed this clip of Abraham Lincoln getting a, th- you know, a shoe thrown at him and all this stuff. And I would never do it again, but I got furious that Jay just kind of kept saying, don't ask me about that. So literally like a, like a star tennis player, I slipped my shoe off. I stood up, 
and I threw it as hard as I could at Jay and it kind of bounced around the thing. Anyway, like two like babies formed in a test tube with Gronk sperm, two security guys lifted me out of my seat, <laughs> threw me out of the David Letterman building so fast, you can't believe it. And then they got me back in. Anyway, I wouldn't <laughs> do it again, but I did write Letterman uh, an apology letter and he actually wrote me back. I have the letter in a frame. He's like, wow, 30 years of television. No one's ever thrown a shoe at me. So we have that uh, going for us. Your, your dad is always welcome on my show. Wow. So Jay came out of the theater and he said, I'm so fucking mad at you. It's like you're my own son. <laughs> and, Jay and, and Jay and Sam were there and they said, well, gosh, dad, what does that mean? And he's like, shut up. And if, I, and, if you, and if I see you on the tweet, if I see you posting this with a tweet machine, you're going to be fucking sorry. And I said, there's no such thing as a tweet machine. But the punchline is there was some guy standing out there and he said, man, if you guys had a reality show, this would be the greatest ending to the first episode. <laughs> it really would. But anyway, it wasn't my place to disturb him on Letterman, but my email was flooded with videos of Jay busting into shows that Howard was doing and all this stuff over the years. So it kind of, you know, he he forgave me and then Letterman had me back on the show and I said, man, that was great, Jay. Are you surprised that uh, Letterman invited me back the next year and Jay puffed a cigar in the limo and he said, not at all. I told him, <laughs> I told him you were mentally ill. <laughs> anyway, uh... thanks for listening, but... Uh, I wouldn't do it again, but hey, I've got the letter from Letterman, and that's great. He remembered, too, because the last uh, show that we went to when Jay threw the football um, on Letterman's last show, I remember when we met him out in that corridor, he was like, oh, yeah, the shoe. Like, he actually referenced it when we were all standing there. And that was when Shuley Shuley stole my football. Exactly. (laughs) Well, listen, do one more of these with me and I'll give it back to you. I I don't need it. You deserve it. You bring happiness to everyone. Uh, Please. We we. Yeah, go ahead. You can clip this. But before we sign off, um, I got to film everyone saying hi to Sally. Absolutely. I was going to ask you how she's doing. How how are they? She's great. And man, she's is this off? Is this private? I mean, we're recording. It's not going to air this part. We'll we'll cut it out. (laughs) I she's, just I'm recording. She's uh, she's been, you know, getting asked out by guys and it's weird for all of us, but we're encouraging her. But um, it's interesting. good for her. And how are the boys? Oh, the men. They're, they're great. I mean, Jake, the youngest, you know, he invented social distancing. He hasn't come out of his apartment <laughs> in Brooklyn in five years. And Jake's up in Bend, Oregon. You know, I always say I wish your car was as close pot you know uh he's up there shooting, <laughs> shooting everything and living with a girl they're fantastic yeah that's wow. awesome that's lovely lovely boys yeah let's just record a something brief for thing surely just a brief thing wear your masks do not go outside without your masks thank Amen. you ira thank you very much <laughs> what I about I... double masks ira it's touch and go here in Alabama. Not everybody wants to wear one in a place of business, which is woo, very weird. People very weird. You can't eat Chick-fil-A wearing a mask, Madison. Yeah. No, I understand, but people, you know, very weird. I, it kidding. is very weird. Ira, my mask says Shuli on it, and that's not a joke. Whoa. All right. Well, that got the response it should have. <laughs> Oh, All right, let me... on the count of three. Everyone say hi, Sally. One, two, three. Hi, hi Sally. Sally. We love you. We miss we you. you. All love the best. You. It's wow. Steven, Madison, Garrett, hi. Christina. Oh, my aunt. I rather weather man. <laughs> thank, thank you for the you, jewelry. Thank you. Oh, oh Shuli, thanks for having me. Uh, it was my pleasure, guys. Thank you for doing this. Uh, yes. I hope to do it again. I love you guys. It's great seeing you. And uh, and uh Christina, Live like I gotta call vacation. up <laughs> tomorrow. I'll call it up Gary C on oh 96.7, the Poconos. All right, <laughs> he says it like he's gonna edit this audio himself and send it in as plugs. <laughs> he calls me like once, twice a week to let me know his schedule. You guys, I'm That's well aware right. of all of his happenings because I he keeps me up to date. 
And then he calls me once or twice a month to tell me that Christina doesn't pick up her phone because no, I, st- I talk to him, but I have to right. regulate it. I, <laughs> and then, he'll, me, and then he'll call me and tell me what, uh, oh, surely yeah, he won't get me on the show. And I'm like, he doesn't work on the show anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be real hard now, Ira. <laughs> I don't care. I'm doing my own little thing. Yeah, you are. Yeah. I, from your I'm lips doing to my, my own lips. little thing on different <laughs> radio stations out of town altogether. <laughs> all together. <laughs> they all know me. They all know One me. Of my favorite Ira quotes we get on the subway. And I think this is after we got him stoned and he grabs onto the pole right next to me and he goes, <laughs> he looks at me and he goes, what they did to Midtown. <laughs> and I go, and, and before I could even say what, he just goes, don't even ask. <laughs> oh, I'm crying. Uh, Your show at Zany's, Zany's not a big place. That that's gonna sell out. That's that's a compliment. It sounded like it wasn't a compliment, but thank you, buddy. Please, please, I'll take it any way I can it. get it. Yeah, you know, you know, you're in. Beforehand, man, I'll I'll be there. So please don't hesitate. It's right up the street from here. Thank you, brother. I will be there. I love you guys. Thank you so much, Christina. Thank you for your help helping me put all this together. And uh, we'll do it again for sure. I think people are really yeah. going to dig this. And yeah. uh, thank you guys again. Love right. you. Thank you, Shirley. Cool. Later, Let's guys. You all. We yes. all like you, Shirley. Yes. Thank you, Ira. Shirley. Just like you. That's thank it. you. The Shirley Show. Huda Media Production.